Drake. No, not that Drake. This Drake. I'm willing to bet that everybody that's clicked on this video has watched Drake and Josh and or knew about the allegations that happened about two years ago. To give a little bit of a breakdown, essentially Drake was texting an underage female and he originally came into contact with her when she was just 12 years old and started texting her uh, pretty explicitly once she turned 15. And throughout, you know, several uh, media storms and the trial itself being very publicized and Drake's image from this Nickelodeon star, this very kind, you know, person back and Drake and Josh was absolutely butchered. And I remember a couple years ago, all over TikTok and Reddit, I mean, nobody really liked Drake anymore and everybody was kind of on the cancel Drake train. I would like to preface myself, I don't necessarily believe in cancel culture. Unless, of course, you're somebody like Harvey Weinstein or Dan Schneider. Now, speaking of Dan Schneider, that's exactly why this whole video is being made. So essentially, there was a new documentary made called Quiet on Set, which is mostly about Nickelodeon, but it's definitely referencing to some Dan Schneider scandals as well as others in Nickelodeon. And within that documentary, Drake Bell has some things to say about his former associates during Quiet on Set. Just coming up, this is a small trigger warning about SA and overall abuse. I was sleeping on the couch where I would usually sleep. And, and uh, I woke up to him uh, I, I opened my eyes, I woke up and he was uh, and I froze and was in complete shock and had no idea what to do or how to react. You know, he's so apologetic. Oh, this will never happen again. I'm so sorry. You know, that I, I don't know what got into me and, and, and I, I crossed the line and, I, and this will never happen again. Um, and well, he figured out how to uh, convince my mom and everyone around to have me, you know, anytime I would have an audition or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything, I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. I really don't know how to uh, elaborate on that on, on camera, really. Why don't you think of the worst stuff that someone can do to somebody as a And that'll answer your question. It was a different time, so I think it was a little easier to go to and from a courthouse and not worry about Twitter that night or TMZ paparazzis being there. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry and yeah, I was pretty shocked. I wasn't going to address Brian. There was no, no reason to. I addressed my statement to everyone in the room. I looked at all of them. And I just said, how dare you? And I said, you will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person. And I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me and doing unspeakable acts and crimes. And that's what I'll remember. So what that was, was little segments of Drake Bell talking about somebody committing, you know, a sexual assault, a, a real life sexual deviance against him. And to the mass surprise, this isn't about Dan Schneider, like TikTok and the internet thought it was. It was actually about Brian Peck. Now, just quickly, because the, the obvious connection seems to be there. This is not related to Josh Peck at all. They have no relation. This was actually Drake's dialogue coach. And he did commit these lewd and disgusting acts to Drake when he was a minor. And and he was taken to court and charged. And as Drake says, it's a different time, so it wasn't as publicized as, you know, maybe something nowadays would be. So Drake never really came out with the information until now. And I want to state that although there are allegations against Drake himself, nobody deserves anything like this. And in my opinion, a 16-month prison sentence was way too low for Brian Peck, even having to register as an offender. I think he should still be in there to this day, and yeah. But the reason that I'm bringing all this up is this new documentary that was just released is 
is kind of the reason that Drake Bell is back in the spotlight. And the one thing that I've noticed is people are sharing his clip from the documentary in all the comments and in all the new Drake stuff that I'm seeing about like him singing live and him, you know, doing little performances and stuff. It's just flooded with support and how handsome he is and how much people love him. And I was really, really taken aback because not even two years ago, he was moving to Mexico or at least migrating his content to Spanish while in Mexico. I, what looked to be as rebranding because by all intents and purposes, he was slandered to high hell in the States and in, you know, like our popular media that we have in the States. I can just say this, you know, to start this segment, I don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. Only Drake and the potential victim know the truth. Now, from those that I've seen supporting Drake publicly, even some, you know, posts going back, uh, you know, over a year, so before all this new Quiet on the Set stuff came out, people are talking about how Drake talked to this young lady. She never said an age. She finally told him an age, and then Drake blocked the girl, finding out her age, which caused the girl to be upset and then report all this, you know, to the authorities, which caused the whole, you know, legal battle and stuff. And then obviously, from the young lady's perspective, I will play her victim statement here when i was 11 i learned that my aunt had a mutual friend who knew the defendant that led to my aunt taking me to meet him for the first time in 2014 when i was 12. when i was 13 i went to him for boy advice he told me that i was beautiful and that boys were stupid he then sent me a photo of myself that he had screen capped from my instagram telling me that I was, quote, such a cutie. Another instance of creepy behavior happened when I was spending time with him at the age of 14. He told me that he couldn't believe how much I'd grown since he last saw me. He said that I wasn't little anymore, and I was, quote, a woman now. When I was 15, I noticed a huge shift regarding his treatment and attitude towards me. When I was younger, he was sweet and actually wanted to talk to me about my life. But at 15, he started sending me messages about how, quote, hot I was. In the summer of 2017, I messaged him, telling him that I was going to see him in concert in the following months. He replied by telling me that he couldn't wait to see me. He also asked me, quote, how old are you now? I told him 15. He then told me to, quote, hurry up, don't smile at me. Not too long after that, his messages to me became blatantly sexual. This eventually led to many months of inappropriate messages and photos being exchanged over Instagram and Snapchat. The photos exchanged included photos of my body and photos of his body and his genitals. On December 1st, 2017, my aunt took me to the Odeon Concert Club to watch him perform. That night, the defendant took me backstage to be alone with him. He started kissing me and the night ended and him having me perform oral sex on him twice. I idolized and looked up to him and he took that and broke it in the most sickening way possible. He is the epitome of evil. I deserved better than to be used for his sick desires and for my suffering to be used for his amusement. Jared Drake Bell is a pedophile and that is his legacy. And I can just say first and foremost, I understand what happened to Drake was tragic and that is admitted into guilt and it is essentially a fact that that happened to Drake and I do have a lot of sympathy for that. But if what the victim is saying here is true, then all of my sympathy that I've just stated goes right out the window. Not for young Drake, but for Drake now. Because could you even imagine the vile feeling of being in that powerless place of being younger than the perpetrator and once the act has happened you're eternally violated and there's no undo button that that you know victims always speak of of even many many years later when they're finally happy and, and have pseudo moved on you know there's never full recovery from those events when you're especially when you're a child and he especially um even going through the legal process has experienced all of that and if it is all true what this victim is saying he put Put that on another child now I will say this as I can try to feed into both sides there was no criminal charge against him for having sexual contact with a minor however he was charged with attempted child endangerment and essentially he was basically charged for sending risky text messages at the very minimum to a minor and as this is a case involving a minor a lot of things are very secretive or I guess 
kept from public eye to protect the minor, which is good. However, the only problem is there is a lot of gray area in Drake's case. From my understanding, from all that I've looked into, and I will link some documents in the description, Drake was found guilty of sending explicit messages to somebody that he knew was a minor. And even at that bare minimum, if he has done that, then I think that his story on Quiet on Set, while it did take courage, and while I do have sympathy for that Drake, that version of Drake, I don't have sympathy for the person that is weaseling his way back into social media. And I'm not trying to point a finger of undebatable guilt on Drake, but you know, there is a lot of data and, and stories to show that people who get victimized in their youth later go on to victimize people themselves. And I can only imagine how the victim of Drake's case feels now that he's done this essential media push of his story and now everybody's showing so much support to Drake again after her case is already you know sealed and shut. If you are on the train of showing Drake support because some information has came out or whatnot please let me know I might be ignorant to some information out there but overall I don't think that this support is warranted for Drake I think that he should not be allowed to even be on social media anymore to be honest that's just that's just my opinion